Welcome to Anywhere Math. I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to solve percent problems using proportions. Let's get started. All right, before we get to our first example, I want to talk about what this lesson is going to be about. Um, here we've got a fraction. One-fourth is equal to 25%. We know that. You should have that memorized. Um, the types of problems we're going to deal with now is finding different parts of this equation. Now, first, we're going to be using proportions. So the first thing, instead of writing it as 25%, we're going to write it as a fraction. So that would become one-fourth equals 25 over 100. Right? This is a proportion. Uh, these two fractions are equivalent to each other, right? Now, uh, we're going to have three types of problems. First, finding the part. So this one represents a part, a part of a whole. That four represents the whole. So sometimes in these uh, percent problems, you're going to be finding the part. Sometimes you're going to have to be finding the whole. And sometimes you're going to be have you're going to have to find the percent. So we're going to do three examples, each one trying to find a different part of this proportion. Okay, not these same numbers, different numbers, but different part of the proportion. So let's get started on example one. Example one: What percent of 15 is 12? So this is a type of problem that you're going to see. Um, first. What do they want us to find? Well, this is pretty obvious. They, they're asking what percent. So they want us to find the percent. So that's easy. That's the thing we don't know. So when we're setting up our proportion, I'm going to put a variable. You could put a P for percent if you want, or just an X over 100. You know the percent is always going to be over 100, right? Um, so that's what we don't know. That's what we're trying to find, what percent. Now we got to figure out, well, what do we put here? Um, we have a part and a whole. When you see this of, of 15, that represents the whole. Okay. Is, is is the other keyword. When you see that is, is 12, that represents the part. So on my other side of my proportion, I'm going to put 12 over 15. So this is what I'm trying to solve. I'm trying to solve for x using proportions. Now, if you remember proportions, we have a couple different ways to solve them. One, we could use cross products, and I could do 15 times x equals 12 times 100. Um, I could also just see if I can kind of use mental math and see, well, how do I get from 15 to 100, and then do the same thing here. Um, those are kind of the two main ways of solving proportions. but there's one thing to remember that's, that can be really helpful is try to simplify any fractions you have before you try to solve because that can really help uh, save some time and make it a lot easier. So 12 over 15, I can simplify, right? Uh, 3 is a common factor. So that becomes 4 and that becomes 5. And now mental math is really easy. Well, 5 to get to 100, I just multiply by 20. So I need to do the same to get to figure out what x is, what my missing percent is, I just multiply by 20 as well. So 4 times 20 is 80, which means what percent? It's 80 percent. Okay? Let's see if that makes sense logically. 12 out of 15 is 12 out of 15. Is that about 80 percent? Yeah, right? It's definitely more than half. Uh, it's 15 out of 15 would be 100%. So it's getting up there. So yeah, 80% makes sense logically. Let's try another example. Okay, example two. What number is 36% of 50? Now, it's not quite as easy as the first one. Well, we know we're not finding the percent. So anytime you have a percent, I like to, I like to just put that in my proportion just to start with. So 36% is going to be 36 over 100. Okay, so now I just need to figure out, am I trying to find the part 
or does it want me to find the whole? Right? Uh, the key is to look for those keywords, is or of. Well, here's is. What number is? Remember, is represents the part. Okay. Well, what number is? That's what I don't know. Of 50, that of 50, again, that is the whole. Okay. So 50 is the whole, which means it needs to go in my denominator. Or sorry, I'll I'll put that as blue. That needs to go in my denominator. What number is? That's what I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find. So that's going to be my variable. I'll just make it x. Um, so here's my proportion. Now let's solve. Again, we could do cross products or maybe try to find another way and see if we can use some mental math. Because really, cross products here, 36 times 50, mm, that doesn't look very fun. So let's see if we can first simplify. Uh, 36 and 100, those have common factors, right? Uh, 4 is a common factor of both, right? 4 times 9 is 36. 4 times 25 is uh, 100. And now, look what, look what happened. Now it's very easy. Remember, I'm trying to get to the variable, so I'm going this direction. Well, 25 times 2 will give me 50, so 9 times 2 will give me 18. So what number is 36% of 50? 18 is 36% of 50. And that makes sense. 25 is 50% of 50, right? So 36 is less than that, so you would expect that number to be less than 25. So that makes sense. Let's try one more example. Here's our last example. 150% of what number is 24? So again, I've got a percent. I'm going to start with that. 150%, that is 150 over 100 equals a common mistake. People see 150 and they think, oh, well, that's greater than 100, so that should be in the denominator. But don't. Remember, for percents, your denominator is always 100, right? Per cent, per 100. So 150 over 100. Uh, now I just have to figure out what's my part and what's my whole and what am I trying to figure out uh, or what do they want me to figure out. So 100. 50% of what number is 24? Is, right? Do you remember? That key word is telling us that that is the part. Okay. Uh, of what number? That is the whole. Okay. Which means this 24 needs to go in my numerator. And the whole is what we're trying to find. That's what I don't know, so I'm going to put an x. Okay. So here is my uh, proportion. Now let's solve. Again, try to simplify before you before you do any solving. So first, well, uh, 150 and 100. I could easily just take off those zeros, divide both by 10. Uh, 15 and 10, five is a common factor, so that would become three. That would become 2, and now, again, becomes pretty simple to just to use mental math. I'm trying to figure out what x is. I'm going this direction. So I'm going that direction here. 3 times 8 is 24. So 2 times 8 will give me uh, 16. Okay. Now, you might be thinking, well, that doesn't seem right because 16 is less than 24, right? Shouldn't the denominator be greater? But if you look, we've got a percent that's greater than 100. So this definitely makes sense to have the part greater than the whole, right? That just 24 out of over 16 is greater than 1, which is why the percent is greater than 100%. So yes. That works. It does make sense. Um, here's some to try on your own. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, please subscribe.